Have you ever wondered why the definition of high blood pressure keeps changing? When I first started practicing medicine back in the 1980s, we only treated people if their blood pressure was above 160 over 95. Then it dropped to 140 over 90. And now if you go above 120 over 80, you're suddenly considered at risk. One of my patients, Helen, 68 years old, once sighed and said, Doctor, yesterday I was healthy, but today I'm sick just because of a number? I remember that moment vividly because it reflects what so many people feel. Are we truly treating illness or are we becoming afraid of the numbers themselves? Today, I wanna to sit down with you, not to talk about pills or prescriptions, but about the truth behind those blood pressure readings and how you can take back control of your health calmly, confidently, and wisely. I've been a doctor for more than three decades and over the years, I've realized something profound. Sometimes what hurts people most isn't the disease itself. It's the fear of being sick. And that fear often begins with a simple number, a small reading on a blood pressure monitor. These days, the moment someone's blood pressure creeps slightly above normal, they immediately believe something is wrong with their body. But here's what I want you to remember. Blood pressure is not a sentence. It's a signal. It's your body's way of communicating, telling you that maybe you're tired, stressed, or simply had one too many cups of coffee. I once had a patient named Richard, 72 years old. He came into my clinic, trembling a little, holding a paper that said, 150 over 88. He looked at me and said, Doctor, does this mean I have high blood pressure? I smiled and said, Not necessarily, Richard. Maybe you walk too fast up the stairs, or you're just nervous being here. Let's check again in 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, his reading was 132 over 82. Same heart, same man, just calmer. You see, blood pressure is not fixed. It changes constantly, like the waves on a quiet lake, a salty meal, a sleepless night, a stressful morning. All can make the numbers rise. That's why I've always said, being diagnosed based on a single reading is like judging the ocean by one wave. Now imagine this. You walk into your doctor's office, your feet don't touch the floor, your arm hangs too low, your heart beats a little faster from the anxiety of the visit, and the monitor shows 145 over 90. From that one number, your life might change. More appointments, more prescriptions, sometimes for years, even decades. But if you measured your blood pressure at home, in a calm setting, sitting upright, arm at heart level, you might see something completely different. That's why I always tell my patients, don't just measure your blood pressure, measure your life. When I was a medical student in the 1970s, we only started treatment if blood pressure was above 160 over 95. By the 1990s, the threshold fell to 140 over 90. Then in 2017, 120 over 80 became the new dividing line between healthy and sick. And just like that, tens of millions of healthy people became patients. Now, lowering blood pressure can indeed help prevent heart attacks and strokes. But here's the catch. Many of those studies were done on high-risk patients, not on the general population. Applying those numbers to everyone, especially older adults, can sometimes do more harm than good. Because as we age, our blood pressure naturally rises a little to keep blood flowing to the brain and organs. If we push it too low, we risk dizziness, fainting, kidney stress, and falls, ironically damaging the very life we're trying to protect. I remember a woman named Margaret, 78, who began fainting after her doctor switched her medication. Her blood pressure was down to 102 over 60. I told her gently, Margaret, medicine should help you live, not make you weaker. We adjusted her dose, added potassium-rich foods, breathing exercises, and daily walks. Three months later, she was out in the park every afternoon with her granddaughter. That's when I realized again, the goal isn't to treat numbers, it's to nurture life. When you care for the root causes, healthy diet, good sleep, stress reduction, daily movement, your body learns how to heal itself. No pill can replace a good night's rest or a morning walk. I've seen patients lower their blood pressure by 10 or 15 points just by walking 30 minutes a day and cutting back on salt. And the best part? They didn't just feel better, they felt in control again. Because every time the normal range drops, 
the number of patients rises and the healthcare system becomes overwhelmed. More prescriptions, higher costs, and less focus on those who truly need help. Wouldn't it make more sense to invest in prevention, in nutrition education, fitness programs, and mental wellness, instead of widening the definition of disease? I've noticed something else too. The fear of being labeled hypertensive can actually make blood pressure rise. One of my patients, James, would measure his blood pressure every morning. The more he worried about the numbers, the higher they went. We spent a session just talking about breathing and mindset. I taught him to sit quietly for two minutes before measuring, to inhale slowly and let go of the anxiety. Two weeks later, his readings dropped by 15 points without changing a single medication. That's why I always say blood pressure is a journey of self-understanding. When you track your numbers, notice your emotions, sleep, diet, and stress. You begin to see patterns, and in that awareness lies power. It's what I call the right to self-health, a kind of wisdom that modern medicine often forgets. For those of us over 50, our bodies may not be as quick as they once were, but that doesn't mean we're weak. It means we must listen more carefully. If you feel dizzy when you stand, if your hands or feet feel cold, if you're more tired than usual, your blood pressure might be too low. Talk to your doctor. Don't be afraid and remember, you are more than a number. I often tell my patients, we don't live for 120 over 80. We live for peaceful evenings, warm meals, and the laughter of people we love. A healthy life isn't measured by a machine. It's measured by how you feel when you wake up in the morning. So if you take one thing away from this conversation, let it be this. Understand your body more than you fear it. Measure with love, not anxiety. And remember, high blood pressure isn't your enemy. It's your body whispering, slow down, breathe, and take care of me. A truly healthy society is not one where everyone has a pill to take, but one where people know how to live wisely, prevent disease through awareness, and honor their bodies with compassion. When we realize that the goal of medicine isn't to treat numbers, but to strengthen people, blood pressure stops being a threat and becomes a teacher, gently guiding us back to balance. So the next time you see that reading on the screen, take a deep breath and smile. You are stronger than that number. And maybe, just maybe, by sleeping earlier, breathing slower, and smiling more often, you're already healing yourself. You know, after all these years in medicine, I've learned that healing doesn't come only from medicine. It comes from peace of mind. I've seen patients lower their blood pressure not because they found a stronger drug, but because they learned to love themselves more, to sleep earlier, eat slower, and stop worrying about every small thing. And I truly believe you can do that too. So if you're watching this right now, remember, your blood pressure does not define you. Your health isn't just in the machine. It's in how you live every single day. Share this message with someone who's feeling anxious about their numbers. You might help them find peace again. And if you'd like to keep walking this journey together, where we learn, reflect, and take care of our hearts, click subscribe and stay with me here. I'm Dr. William Anderson. Thank you for listening, for breathing, and for being here. Slow down a little so your heart can rest and blossom again.